how would we represent the concepts we use in programming languages day to day? Imagine a language with only expressions in it, everything expression, and let's represent it with an enum. An if statement can be think of as a tertiary expression in Swift or C, and I'm going to use some big words here, and it co it's composed of a predicate, a consequent, an alternative, in other words, the if clause and the else clause. Each clause itself is an expression. For example, the predicate would be something that evaluates to a ball, and consequent and alternative is an expression that evaluates to something else. A variable references something in our environment and is identified by a string. An example would be just A a variable. Now the value of a variable has to come from somewhere and that would be a literal. In our language we'll have different types of literals like ball, integers, or strings. Such value is going to be associated with our case here. And here are some examples. The concept of function is crucial to a programming language and we'll represent it with a lambda expression which takes a list of parameters represented by strings and a single expression which is its body. In this Swift example, the parameter is n and its body is n times n, an expression. To give a literal or a lambda a name, we'll use a construct called a definition. All it does is associate a name to an expression so that we can reference it later with a variable. So we'll have a string and expression. In Swift, that will be let name equals something. To use a lambda expression, we evaluate its body by calling it. We need to supply an expression that represents the function itself and a list of expressions for each parameter. In other words, these are the arguments. So here, f would evaluate to the lambda itself, and we have a bunch of arguments, one, two plus three. Each argument itself is an expression that will evaluate when we call the lambda. Now this may seem very abstract, so let's do some examples. Here's a literal 2. We just use our literal case and give it a value 2. What about things such as the less than operator? In our language, we can think of them as functions that's defined by binding a lambda expression to the character less than. So to reference it, we just need to evaluate the variable less than. To invoke less than, we first evaluate the variable less than and we'll get an expression. And then we'll pass two expressions, the operands, to the lambda as arguments. So the arguments are a variable n and the literal 2. Imagine, if you will, in the pseudocode, we look up a function by its name and invoke it with some arguments. Now this expression is starting to get hard to read, so I'm going to give it a little format and I'll keep doing this from this point on. Basically each time we have more than one thing, I'm going to start on a new line and a level of indentation. With these examples, we should have a rough idea of how the representation of a language is working. Let's transition to a more sophisticated example by writing a real Swift function that computes the Fibonacci sequence. Of course, this is the definitional, aka most naive implementation where the result of computing two previous values are added together to represent the current value until we have a very small number. 
Of course, in the enum we wrote, there's not a thing that represents a function definition. So we'll have to resolve to writing a lambda expression and assign it to a variable named lambda. There's some subtleties in here. For example, inside the body of lambda, we're already using the variable value fib. Let's say this is possible because we are defining and invoking the lambda in different times. By the time we invoke this lambda, its environment already have something called fib. Let's write this function with our little language. I'm going to also add a placeholder expression just so we can make playground happy whenever it complains about an expression missing. This way we'll take advantage of its autocompletion better. For example, if I want to take a break, I can just say expression equals p. At the top level, we're defining a variable fib and binding it to an expression. This expression happened to be a lambda. We have one parameter, n. The body of fib is an if expression. The predicate is n less than 2, which we've written earlier, so I'm just going to copy it. The consequent, or the if clause, is just whatever the value of n variable is. Now the else clause is more complicated in that it's a result of a addition. But we've dealt with this before. An add uh, operator is just a function that we're going to look up in the environment and call with its operand being the two arguments. The operands of the plus operation is again result of invoking functions. At this point, we should feel comfortable doing that. We look up the function variable by name, pass it to call, and combine that with this argument. Of course, the function we're calling is fib. Now, fib takes one argument, which itself is an expression, again, involves an operator minus. So we'll do the old trick of looking it up by a variable name, calling the variable, and pass the operand to the call expression. And of course, this is n minus 1. Now we have the expression for the first recursive call to fib. And the second one is almost exactly the same. So we're just going to copy it and change one of the literals from 1 to 2. And we're done. Now, I know what you're thinking. Daniel, why are we writing code in this fake language that we can't compile or run or do anything with? Alternatively, some of you may already know what I'm doing and where I'm going next. We now have a way to represent the concepts in a small programming language. We even wrote a little program with these constructs by composing the enum values. In other words, we have a in-memory representation of a program. We can take this representation and do one of two things. The first, we can mirror its content with real code in another programming language, for example, assembly. Or we can write a function that reads it and use it as instruction and carry out the tasks specified by it. If we do the first thing, then we'll have a compiler. If we do the second, then we would be having an interpreter. Therefore, the expression enum can be seen as a very rudimentary abstract syntax tree. It is a familiar concept to all language implementers. To make us feel even better, our syntax tree is actually very close to that of a complete implementation of a scheme. All we need to do is add a thing called a quotation and another thing called assignment. An assignment is what it sounds like. It mutates a variable.
these are all the fundamental ingredients to implement Scheme, which then can be used to implement all kinds of fantastic programs, including Scheme itself. You can read all about this in the classic MIT textbook, Structure and Interpretation of Computer Programs. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.